local, live, late breaking. This is KMAX News at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Ryan Chandler. Well, the Red Raiders here at home again tonight facing off against Florida International and Eric Kelly brings us the details of that big win. Yeah, Ryan, we're going to do just that. So the first home game a little bit closer than many fans probably hope. The goal in this one at the Jones not only win, but maybe make it a little easier on the hearts of the sellout crowd at the Jones. Texas Tech with a chance to end the non-conference 3-0. and And early on in this one, the defense starts the scoring. It's Muddy Waters, great nickname, great play. He cuts off the Max Borton Schlager pass. Good name on good name crime. And he takes it to the house, 72 yards, ties it at seven at that point. Second quarter now, 21-14 Red Raiders. Tyler Shuck to Trey Cleveland to make it 28-14. Shuck had a really good day in this one. And then at halftime, good play there. Some great names going into the Ring of Honor. Elmer Tarbucks and Michael Crabtree going to the Texas Tech football Ring of Honor. Second half. Crabtree pumping up the fans. Red Raiders running away in this one. Play it's pick. Shuck to Mason Tharp. He finds the end zone. Tech wins this one big behind a big second quarter. 54-21 the final. And our David Collier joins us now from the Jones. David, a little bit of a rocky start, especially in that first quarter. But the difference is, credit to the Texas Tech offense in this one, Red Raiders really turned it on to pull away from the Panthers. Yeah, you mentioned it a few minutes ago when we started the show, Eric. You know, this is a game that you wanted to see finish like this one did after last week, the heartbreak or the near heartbreaking loss. Definitely hard on everybody's hearts in the stadium. But you got to relax and enjoy most of the second half of this one. As you mentioned, the Red Raiders just figuring things out offensively. Tyler Shuck had thrown for 401 yards in the first two games this season. Tonight, as you mentioned, he's starting to figure it out. 399 yards, 26 completions, and four touchdown passes. Spreading the ball around as the Red Raider offense definitely didn't get much going in the first quarter, but they make, made up for lost time, scoring 28 points in the second frame. Give the Red Raiders 35 points at the half on their way to their 54 to 21 win. We uh, talked all week about a starting strong on uh, both sides of the ball and how we wanted to start strong and it was not a, a um, indication of the result of the first series. It wasn't going to be whether we scored or we gave up a score. It was the vibe of starting strong and I certainly think we did that. Uh, it was a really good second quarter. Yeah, the defense looked great in this one, shutting down one of the nation's top rushers. He was held under 60 yards, Devontae Price was. Meanwhile, we mentioned that Red Raider offense clicking. 11 different receivers catching footballs, much more on the distribution of the ball coming up in Red Raider Nation. Ryan? All right, David, thank you very much. And yes, Red Raider legend, legend Michael Crabtree had a very busy day in Lubbock. He finished his Texas Tech career as one of the most decorated wide receivers in our history and went on to play for the 49ers until last year. And today, he's back in Lubbock for Tech's Ring of Honor ceremony. Crabtree joins the late Elmer Tarbox as one of the original stars of Tech football as only the sixth and seventh members of the prestigious ring reserved for those Tech says made an indelible mark on their football program. And after he headed out to Raider Outfitters to sign autographs for fans, and you'll soon be able to spot his name engraved into the stadium and his name inside of the stadium as we saw in sports tonight. Also, a more sober, so, somber honor held today for local firefighter Eric Hill, who died in the line of duty last year. International Association of Firefighters remember the impact he made on our community at their annual Fallen Firefighter Memorial adding his name to their wall of honor. Lieutenant Eric Hill was killed while at the scene of a car accident on Interstate 27 in January of 2020. Officer Nicholas Reyna was also killed and fellow firefighter Matt Dawson critically injured. Hill was one of 160 IAFF members recognized from both the U.S. and Canada and all who died serving their communities in 2020. Now this memorial did take place in Colorado Springs, but you can watch it here in Lubbock on our replay at everythinglubbock.com. 
Now, Lubbock Utilities is also resuming its normal business operations next week. They had held off on cutting off your services for non-payment all summer because of a new billing system implemented earlier this year, but they're not cutting any slack anymore. Next week, customers with an overdue balance could be disconnected, so if you're a little behind on your bills, the city is encouraging you to set up a payment plan or look into one of their many payment assistance options. And they do have ample resources. Take a look here. If you do need a little extra help, you can start by looking into the city's Community Development Part Department. They partner with the organization Neighborhood House to help residents with their electricity and gas payments. And you can apply at mylubbock.us slash community development. Lubbock County residents with children or disabled adults in their home can also call the Lubbock County General Assistance Fund for financial help. And veterans and their surviving spouses can contact the Veterans Resource Coordination Group at vetstar.org for any financial needs. All that information is here and you can learn more about it at cityoflubbock.com. All right, let's take a look outside. Madison, how's it going over there in the weather lab? Well, fall is quickly approaching, but you wouldn't know that if you had been outside today. The dog days of summer are making one last appearance before we get into some cooler weather, hopefully this week. Taking a look outside right now, looking down at the Jones Stadium, still led up for a Red Raider win today. Down there, the sky cam is at the Overton, looking right there at the stadium, and it is a sight to behold on game days. I really love this camera. Right now in Lubbock locally, we're looking at a temperature of 74 degrees. Pretty cool temperatures across the area for this evening. It really cooled down from the hotter temperatures we experienced, 80 out there in Paducah and 70 degrees out at Ta Tatum, New Mexico. Hour by hour, as we get closer to midnight, we're going to be seeing temperatures stay about the mid 70s and then really drop off as we start to get into tomorrow with a low of 64 degrees for your Sunday morning drive. Looking at your three day forecast, we can see again the dog days of summer are trying to make one last appearance before they leave the South Plains, with it being 94 tomorrow, 95 for Monday, and then that temperature drop. That is going to be our first official, really truly cold front of the season and I'll have more on that and your full forecast coming up. Madison, thank you very much. I cannot wait for those cooler temperatures on Tuesday, but turning now to Austin where it is heating up. Lawmakers are back on Monday for Act 3 of this legislative marathon that seems to never end. The first special session back in July, we remember, saw a Democratic walkout that stalled Governor Abbott's priorities. The second in August delivered a lot of those priorities and became very controversial and polarizing. And they say the third time's the charm, but I, I really don't see how this third special session could be any more efficient than the last two. In fact, it could be the most contentious yet because this one is for redistricting the mandatory process every decade that decides which lawmakers keep their seats and who represents you in Austin. And KMAX Monica Madden is at the Capitol with an inside look at what's to come. After two dramatic special sessions stalled by Democrats' effort to thwart an elections bill affecting how Texans vote, lawmakers will return for a third special session to decide where their vote will count. The process of redrawing legislative and congressional districts is bound to be another political battle, not just between parties, but also within them. Republicans will aim to draw maps to keep their political dominance in both the state legislature and congressional delegation, which is growing by two seats. 95% of Texas's growth since the 2010 census was thanks to people of color. So Democrats say their mission will be ensuring those groups are represented fairly. Also hanging overhead is still the task of deciding how to allocate the 16 billion in federal COVID relief dollars. And Governor Abbott is asking lawmakers to consider whether Texas or local governments can mandate COVID-19 vaccines and if so, what exemptions might apply? Lawmakers also will resurrect legislation that would require transgender student athletes to participate in sports corresponding with their biological sex. And at any given point, the governor can add more policy requests to this 30 day session at the Capitol. Monica Madden, back to you. Monica, thank you very much. And more to come on KMAC News at 10. The Texas Capitol also forced to confront a major surge of people seeking asylum on the Texas border. We'll take a look at Del Rio, Texas next. Select clearance and closeout mattresses, or get 0% interest for five years on top bedding brands. This weekend only at Ashley Home Store. 
Introducing new craft sandwiches at Slim Chickens. Try the chicken club sandwich, the cayenne ranch sandwich, the buffalo ranch sandwich, or the crispy chicken sandwich. The choice is yours. Download the Slim Chickens app and order online. Housekeeping. The Department of Nutritional Sciences is currently recruiting eligible men and women aged 18 to 60 years old to participate in a research study. Participants will receive $310 plus weight loss intervention, body fat, and metabolism measurement. Some will receive FDA-approved medicine for weight loss. Assessment for eligibility will be conducted by telephone and also during an in-person assessment. Call today to find out if you are eligible to participate. It's Chevy Truck Month, and it's time to add the perfect accessories to your new Chevy. Make it bolder. Make it work harder. Make it your own. Find new possibilities. Find new roads. Get a total value of $3,000 on this Silverado 1500 True Cab Texas Edition. Plus, now during Truck Month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance towards the purchase of eligible accessories. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. There are 82 reasons to enjoy Table 82. Whether it's date night with that someone special, sharing great times and delicious food with the whole family, happy hour with your co-workers at the coolest bar in town, or hanging with all your friends at the best patio around. It's all right here. Local, live, late breaking. You're watching KMAX News at 10. Back to KMAC News, where we turn now to the southern border, where officials in Del Rio, Texas, say the scene is worse than they've ever seen it. As many as 13,000 Haitians have come to our state for relief, desperate after their home has endured a devastating earthquake and the assassination of their president. ABC's Marcus Moore takes us there. Tonight, city leaders declaring a state of emergency in the small Texas town of Del Rio. Nearly 13,000 men, women, and children have converged on the border town to seek asylum, and they're being held in squalid conditions in this temporary staging area under the Del Rio International Bridge. What you see behind me are individuals that have not even been processed or detained. The shade under the bridge offering little escape from stifling triple-digit heat, food, and clean water becoming scarce. This is as bad as I've ever seen it. Governor Greg Abbott ordering state police and National Guard to assist overwhelmed border agents. Sources say the majority of the migrants are from Haiti, the nation still reeling from the assassination of its president and last month's earthquake. More than 208,000 apprehensions were reported at the southern border in August, a 317 percent increase over the same month last year. Today, DHS Secretary Alexander Mayorkas saying that they are working to address the influx, stating they will employ the use of Title 42, a Trump-era health policy which permitted the expulsion of migrants without allowing them to seek asylum. We have authorities by reason of that special circumstance, and we will exercise those authorities. And more people could be on the way. Officials are anticipating that an additional 8,000 men and women could come here in the days ahead as Customs and Border Protection officials try to get a handle on a situation that seems to be getting worse. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Del Rio, Texas. 
Marcus, thank you very much. And turning back here to Lubbock, I understand we have some good weather to look forward to this yes, week. Yes, right, some Madison? cooler temperatures that we desperately need right now. Taking a look at our almanac, we can see that the temperatures for today, they're usually supposed to be 84 for today, but we got all the way up to 90 degrees. So hopefully with this cool front that is coming in, we'll get back to some more fall-like temperatures just in time for the start of fall on Wednesday. I can't wait to hear it. We'll be right back.